everybody, this is very exciting today. I think my Mona Chica has arrived. I'm not gonna make any big secrets about it. You know that I lost mine, but I was not gonna be without a Mona Chica. So, here she is. I think, I hope, and I hope in good condition. Let's see what she looks like. Everything I have prepared on the top here, I think I'm ready. I have two wonderful Greek yogurt tubs. I might need them because this nursery charges 37 euros shipping. Can you believe it? So I have my bowls ready because I am not entirely sure what I'm gonna find inside, how big they are. And I have my CalMax solution with a double portion of seaweed to soak them in straight away and it's at 6.3 because I do believe they're coming in inorganic media. I have yet to see an orchid that comes in LECA. So I'm ready with 6.3. Um, fertilizer solution basically just CalMag at 100 ppm um, to get them soaked up and get some strength into them. Right, muy muy exciting. I hope I haven't got a dud. I know that the Mona Chica is on a mount. And if you've seen the image before, it's coming from patrons. I've never ever bought an orchid from them before. But I was discussing my Mona Chica demise with the orchid room on Instagram. And I was Googling, trying to find Renanthera Mona Chica in Europe for sale. I wasn't successful and within five minutes she came back to me <laughs> with a screenshot that Petrons has won, even though it's mounted. Now, I didn't want a seedling. I have been through my seedling phase. Um, I wanted already a blooming size one, so I didn't want to have to wait another two or three years for a Monochica to bloom. Yeah, she found a blooming size one and I went straight to get it. But at 37 euros shipping, that is, I don't know, extortion maybe? So they have a little pamphlet here. They're from Belgium. Let me see that I get this in frame, if that's of interest. They are in Belgium. But uh, like I said, I've never ordered from them before. I have no idea what to expect. So back to my thought process about the 37 euros, I wasn't just going to buy, of course, the Renanthera Mona Chica, which I think was 17 euro 50, something like that, and then almost double, no, well, more than double the price on shipping. So I got myself some encyclias, two that are very similar, but they have different color of flowers and I don't think I'm going to be able to show you any pictures. I don't think they're in bloom. But let me have a look. I need the two for the pots. I need this maybe for the mount. And I'll be right back. And I need a bag for the peanuts because I'm not having this going everywhere. Now, um, let me just say that the purchasing experience was fine. You buy orchids, happy days, yay. You know, add to cart and all that. However, what happened afterwards, I was not well pleased with. Uh, yes, we're dealing with COVID, but I would have thought that a nursery would have like an automated email system to confirm an order. I didn't hear anything for a week about patrons. I knew that I had paid because my PayPal account told me so. At least I had that confirmation. So a week later, I got in touch with patrons to ask about my order and it took three emails to actually get their attention and then they said they told me basically they're very busy because of covid and more shipping needs to be done etc but that my order was confirmed and it will be shipped and then they gave me a tracking number um i didn't appreciate that part very much because at the end of the day there should be an automated email like with many others that come and say Thank you for your order. Here's the confirmation. We'll get back to you when we ship. In my opinion, but what do I know? What do I know? 
Okay, so these are the two encyclia. This is the Mona Chica. I'm going to open her first because this was the reason for the purchase. And, oh dear. Yeah, okay. She is going to need a lot of help. Oh boy. Let me just get things out of the way so that I can show you. Actually, you know what? I'm going to unpack everything first and I'm going to get it soaking and then I'll show a close up. But what I see so far, ouch. Like, ouch. Big ouch, okay. First impression, ooh la la. So this is an Encyclia, they're supposed to be fragrant. They have very star-shaped flowers. They're very large. And um, because I don't have many Encyclia, I thought I would get myself two more, seeing as the one I have is growing really well, and they're fragrant. So I thought, okay, get me another one. And this would be the, oh, let's see, people's handwriting, really. I'll put up a pop-up, but it's, they call them the Prostechia Brassonde, Brassonde, but I'll put a pop-up up. That's why I like my personalized labels which is much more legible for me anyway, and they don't fade. But let's have a look at this encyclia. They have beautiful sprigs of flowers, star-shaped, not as the typical encyclia colors. And um, it, it, it's looking all right. I'll get all this into the pots and then we'll have a look at them. So basically the two encyclias are pretty similar, except one flower is more white and the other one more bronze. So I'm not too, I haven't wavered away too much. And they look like quite substantial plants, I must say. As long as they're compact growers, I like the upright growth pattern. So this one looks a little bit more dehydrated than I would like. It's the Postechia Iono Centra. Again, I'll put a little tag up for you to see. Let's get this out. And I would have thought my mount would have to go into the bowl, but no. This encyclia has to go into the bowl. And let me take some bark out because there is a new growth there. And I am not going to drown it with soggy bark. This is quite a substantial plant. Maybe they had a water shortage at Fritton's there in Belgium because my word, how dry can you get? So I'm gonna put her in the bowl and immediately drown it in something yummy as a welcome home cocktail. Welcome to your destination, you know, like when you go on a vacation and then they come up with a beautiful, then maybe a Kir Royal or whatever, a fruit juice. That is what I have for my orchids when they first arrive. I'm ready with that. I didn't know they were going to come today. At the end of the day, they were shipped. I was told they were shipped on Thursday. Uh, last week and today is Tuesday so that's not so bad I must say shipping time is not so bad no complaints there however I didn't appreciate no form of communication and then to be told that they are busy because of COVID and more people wanting orchids that to me is not a reason with your automated systems available today so let me get these guys over here and let's get you down and let's have a look at them. <laughs> oh hi! <laughs> 
I wanted to show you my new orchids. Yeah, okay. I, I, yeah. I'm getting carried away picking out bark because I don't want any bark soaking up the, the water and uh, affecting any new growth that at this point I can't see. <laughs> so let's have a look at them. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me show you my new Monachica first. When I said, oh dear, yeah, you know, you know, people, honestly, you, you, you ship in a big box. So why can't you just wrap up an orchid without having to break the roots? Put it in the big box that you're going to ship anyway because you have big plants. And don't try to make the package smaller simply because you got to fit a root in. That is so annoying to me. And she had a growing tip. Now, I'm not sure I can save this root from and, and not have it deteriorate, but oh, that annoys me so much. Now, if it was just this plant, okay, granted, I was going to buy just one because I only wanted one, but not at 37 euros for shipping. So if I only bought one, I can understand you want to put it in a little box. But you have these guys next to them and look at the size of them. And the box, you could have clearly just wrapped it around, kept it nice and long without compromising the root. Now, I don't understand, honestly. I don't. I don't. I think she'll be all right, but you know, she, does, she doesn't look. She doesn't look like... <clears throat> She's not in the best of health, let's put it that way. I'm just checking the roots. And if you say blooming size, I don't even see a spike. But yeah, maybe next year she will be blooming size. But I don't see a previous bloom spike at all. Poor, poor little girl, honestly. I hope I can take care of her adequately and appropriately. I feel terrible. I feel terrible. If I owned a nursery, I am, um, my word, things would be a little bit different. And I do understand all the cost cutting factors. I get that. But there's ways to cut costs and still be effective and respective of the product you're trying to sell, in my opinion. Am I having a rant? No, I'm not. <laughs> am I? Oh, maybe a little one. <laughs> But anyway, another good reason why I do this straight away, apart from getting nutrients into the orchid as soon as possible to reduce, sorry for the jiggling, to reduce the stress, is that in the next three to four hours, I'm gonna be able to see if I'm flushing out any snails. You see this root tip here? Now it's not been munched, but it's dead. So this is also something, I'm sorry, I just can't help myself. <laughs> Bark! This is something that I do as well because push comes to shove. If there are any little snails, they've been in a beautiful dry environment, but they don't get to stay there. So this one, let's have another look, is the Brasson Day. Prostechia. Brass so whatever. So then she's got this growth from this year. And she's a great looking plant. Great looking, honestly. Yeah. No sign of too much desiccation or stress. There is a sheath in both these growths. I don't know if they will mount to anything. Maybe this one. Maybe this one will do something because that's this year's growth. This one has not gone dark yet. It might, but I'm almost certain that this one will produce a, she uh, a spike. That should be interesting. So yeah, she's a really, really nice one. I'm impressed with this plant. Good quality. I love it. This one's great. And here's the other one pretty much brother and sister or sister and sister here let's have a look there's a new growth coming right there so that's great 
nice sturdy bulbs on the front new growth that's great as well I can peel those off later there's nothing looking like it's any issue on the bulb down there that's all firm it's only light colored because it's been hasn't been exposed to the Sun uh, the back bulbs here they are a bit concerning for a plant that's not a specimen size it shouldn't be looking like this but the roots are fine the front growing roots they're fine I have root tips there's another small growth right here maybe that's what's stressing the back out because there's no roots in the back I don't see why it should it's got plenty of roots by the looks of it in the front but these guys that's why I said maybe they had a water shortage in Belgium who knows growing root tips yeah the encyclias I can work with they're absolutely fine just want to hydrate a little bit those little branching roots right there I can work with the encyclias I have concern for the Mona Chica she does worry me so I would say purchasing experience from patrons there could be communication improvement let's put it that way and your price of shipping is extortionate in my opinion um, if you're going to ship something for 37 euros in a big box then you make sure that everything arrives intact and not just bend roots willy-nilly in order to fit whatever that's just not on that's just not on but anyway we will see what we can do with this does anybody have these encyclias I've never actually seen them. So if you have them, let me know. And uh, if you have them also and they've bloomed for you, let me know about their fragrance. I'm super excited to get these, despite the fact they weren't the plan, but I am happy to have them in my collection. And I believe I will have space for them. We shall see. Thank you everybody so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.